Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A suspect wanted in a shooting death case here in San Antonio is now under arrest. What's next in the case for the man who is now charged with murder? Time has got to get it up before the shot clock runs out. They do. It's good. Oh, mama! <laughs> Some exciting moments last night as the Spurs take on the New York Knicks. We have highlights of San Antonio's big win coming up. I want to see that, the Texas Longhorns winning streak at the Elmhurst. Well, that explains one of the problems right there, doesn't it? Outside with live cam, down to 54 degrees. A bit on the cool side this morning, but a big change again from last week. We are looking ahead to New Year's weekend. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is December 30th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, getting really, you know, prepared for the nice weekend, a nice calm weekend, I a lot, think. A lot of people are making plans, and here's the great news this morning. Our buddy Mike Osterhage oh, oh, is back from Christmas welcome. break. Thank you. I thought you were going to say great news sunny skies this weekend, but no, thank you very much. So We're glad to have you back, my friend. It is good to be back, and yeah, what a difference a week makes. Yes. 16 yeah. this, this time last week, and we'll drop as low as the upper 40s later on this morning. So, And a great looking weekend, albeit on the warm side, but if you are planning on uh, doing some celebrating this weekend, we're not going to have anything to worry about as far as the weather is concerned. We do have a lot of clouds out there. As you can see, no problems as far as any precipitation. There are some showers, though, out to the west, just coming across the Big Bend area out in western portions of the uh, hill country. And there'll be a few of them around this morning. And then that's going to try and ease its way to the east a little bit. So, yes, there is a chance for a uh, shower or two around here. But most of the rain later on today is going to be kind of in the western half of our area. Still got the chance for a shower or two around here. 40 in Kerrville is the cool spot. 57 into Lotus, 46 ball 30, 52 out there at the airport right now. So we're about 10 degrees above normal and we've got relatively low humidity compared to those temperatures. So even though we've got some cloud cover out there, I think we will drop down a couple of more degrees before it's all said and done. Mountain cedar on the moderate side, molds on the low side as of yesterday's count and throughout the rest of today. A couple of showers are going to be possible. Like I said, mainly off to the west. We're going to hit a high today up to 70. So, yes, we will be anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above normal and even warmer as we go on into tomorrow. Wrapping up 2022, starting off the new year on Sunday. A couple of fronts later on. Not, not anything like what we had last week, but maybe it will cool us down once we get into the new year. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A suspect wanted in connection to the shooting death of a man in front of his own daughter has been arrested. 20-year-old Joe Longoria is charged with murder. Police say Longoria shot a 49-year-old man after an argument on December 15th. It happened in the 400 block of Lebanon Street, that Lebanon Street, that's on the city's southeast side. Now, family members identified the victim as Inez Quiroga. His daughter, Joanne, says he saw it happen as they were leaving their home. She says her father honked at two cars blocking both sides of the street. Now, one car drove off. Joanne says her father was shot after he got out of his truck to confront that dri driver. Quiroga died at the scene. This morning, ABC News has learned that New York Congressman-elect George Santos is telling Republican leaders he will not seek re-election in 2024 as his background continues to come under fire. Santos is set to take office next week and refuses to step aside despite calls for him to resign as more possible lies about his schooling and family history come to light. Santos claimed he attended the New York private school Horace Mann, but the school claims there is no record of him. Federal and local prosecutors are investigating whether Santos committed any crimes involving finances and lies about his background. Santos has apologized for, quote, embellishing his resume, end quote. President Joe Biden has signed a $1.7 trillion bill funding government operations through September of 2023. The bill increases spending for domestic and defense department programs. It also includes roughly $45 billion in new aid for Ukraine and NATO allies, a sum larger than Biden had requested. Congress cleared the bill just before Christmas, and Biden had until today to sign the measure to continue government operations. Biden signed the more than 4,000-page bill yesterday in the U.S. Virgin Islands, where he is spending time with family. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy is offering a key concession as he still fights to, for his bid to become House Speaker. Sources say he told critics he would reduce the threshold required to force a floor vote on ousting the sitting Speaker. Right now, the majority of the House GOP is required to call for the so-called motion to vacate the Speaker's chair. 
But sources say McCarthy is willing to drop that number to only five members. That might be too low for the moderate wing of the party. And it's still too high for some of McCarthy's fiercest critics. The speaker's vote is scheduled for Tuesday, January 3rd. At least 40 people have died as a result of the storm that paralyzed many parts of our country. As CNN Mike Valerio reports, while authorities continue to search for and identify other potential victims, a new threat is emerging. As the massive amount of snow from the historic blizzard that struck western New York begins to melt. As it warms up toward the end of the week, reaches 50 degrees, we expect that there will be some flooding. We've seen uh, these patterns before after storms. But officials say the flood threat may not be as bad as initially forecast. We're not really too concerned with any flooding, although some of our, um, our districts right now are doing some snow ditching, opening up drainage inlets so that this gradual melt will take place. Right now, officials are working to name the unidentified victims of the storm and say they expect the death toll to rise in the coming days. Some of those families don't even know their loved one is dead yet. There are additional bodies that have been received that are believed to be blizzard deaths, but they do need to have an autopsy and additional work done. Now, nearly one week after the storm hit, a driving ban in the city of Buffalo has been downgraded to a travel advisory. And at least three states have sent in help to get the city up and running again, which officials say has been expensive. We're using about 2,000 gallons of diesel every four hours. We're really kind of spending about a million dollars a day, including a million dollars yesterday to open up the southern part of Buffalo. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. 437, 54 degrees. Spurs, Longhorns, and Cowboys all in action last night. Two out of the three won. Not too bad. We're going to have some of the big moments from each game next. You early bird commuters, here's how things are looking out there right now as you head home or maybe head to work. 281 at Jones Malsberger. No problems there. You're looking live right now at Highway 90. And couples, that'll get a lot busier in about an hour or so. And let's look out there with a live can. It felt a little cooler this morning. We're at 54 degrees, but overall it's going to be a nice day. We'll be right back. Spurs hosting the Knicks last night. Devin Vassell didn't play to do knee soreness. In the first quarter, Jeremy Sohan misses the layup. Romeo Langford there for the putback. 10-9 Spurs. Cue up Josh Richardson for the buzzer beater. Three ball, and the Spurs led 38-29 after one. Spurs led by a minute as 14 in the second and held the lead at halftime. All right, jump to the third. Trey Jones to Sohan, and the Rook throws down the baseline slam dunk. Spurs by 11. Later on, Stanley Johnson grabs a defensive rebound, then throws the ball to Langford for a layup. Then Keldon makes a high arching three to help the Spurs lead after three. Fourth quarter, Knicks try to save the ball from going out of bounds. But Romeo gets the pass instead, lays it in, scored a career high 23. Spurs win 122 to 115. I guess I've just won them all around games. I was just letting the game come to me and just just playing playing basketball. Honestly, it was nothing uh, out the ordinary. He's done everything from start to not play a minute in other games. He just always seems to be ready no matter what we need. So with Devin out, uh, he did a hell of a job. All right, Spurs host Luka and the Mavs tomorrow night at 6. Luka scored like 60,000 points in one game the other night. Uh, they play that game tomorrow at 6. That is New Year's Eve. Rough night for the Longhorns at the Alamo Bowl, taking on the Washington Huskies last night. Texas scored 10 late points, pulling within 7 on Burt Auburn's 26-yard field goal with 140 left, then failed an onside kick try. Longhorns stopped the Huskies on the ensuing possession and took over on their own 16 with 32 seconds to play. Got to the Washington 40 final play. Huskies quarterback Michael Penix Jr. threw for 287 yards and two touchdowns. That helped Washington hold off Texas 27 to 20. Texas, of course, without star running back Bijan Robinson because of the NFL drafts of Texas rush for just 51 yards. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Prescott with plenty of time. Fires. Touchdown. Caught. Leaping grab by Dalton Schultz. 
All right, so the good news, bad news game for the Cowboys. A win, big win for the Cowboys. It's not Dak through for 282 yards, two touchdowns to Dalton Schultz as the Cowboys beat Tennessee 27-13 for their sixth win in seven games. Prescott took advantage of the ailing Titans defense, finding C.D. Lamb for 11 catches and 100 yards. Cowboys posted their first back-to-back 12-win -back season since 94-95 when Dallas won its last of the franchise's five Super Bowl titles. Cowboys still need to finish the regular season by winning at Washington next with Philly losing out for a chance at a second straight NFC East title. Otherwise, they will be locked into the number five seed in the NFC. The downside of last night's game, the offense uh, rather unpredictable again. Mm -hmm. Dak throwing three more interceptions, but still got the win against yes. a very banged up Tennessee Titans. Yes, well, at least they won. They and, the, and the Spurs just not the long Not the long <laughs> Time now, 443 and 54 degrees for now. Why not start the new year off right with a nice Mega Millions jackpot? Up next, how the store owners who sell the winning tickets across the country could win big too. Sometimes sports fans turn to trying to find a game online if it's not available on air. Why doing so could be putting yourself at risk. And this morning's GMA First Look, Mega Millions Mania, as the jackpot grows to $640 million. Will anyone be able to claim that winning ticket? We're hearing from players and, and seeing that they are excited about uh, the Mega Millions jackpot tonight. And, of course, trying to start that new year with... Uh, Perhaps a new life and a you know new vacation spot. The Mega Millions jackpot up a whopping $75 million in just the last few days. This pot has been growing since October. It's the biggest prize ever offered around New Year's. The more tickets that are bought, the higher that jackpot is going to go, and that's why we're seeing it growing the way we are. But it's not just the players with visions of dollar signs dancing in their heads. Store owners, too. If they sell a winning ticket, they get a piece of the pie. Yes, I'm a winner, too. I'm excited for that, too. With your GMA First Look, I'm DeMarco Morgan, ABC News, Altadena, California. Whether it's football or another sport, a lot of fans want to watch the game from the comfort of their couch. But if they don't get the channel the game is on, some turn to free streaming. But 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moore says those freebies can cost you. Jeff Cullen will do just about anything to watch a Bills game. My first football game that I ever remember watching was the Buffalo Bills versus the Washington Redskins at the time. If fans don't get the channel for their game, they sometimes turn to free sports streams. These unauthorized streams are pirated reproductions of copyrighted sports events, and they're just a Google search away. It may seem harmless, but Consumer Reports says you're gambling with your online privacy and security. There's a couple different buckets of like problems that you could run into. Uh, one would be uh, kind of the security stuff like malware, uh, viruses, things like that. Malware can do things like lock you out of your computer until you pay a ransom or search for passwords. Just by visiting one of these websites, they could download a file silently in the background to your computer uh, and, and, and that's all it takes basically. These sites can also have CD content and a lot of ads. So what can you do if you don't want to miss a big game? Streaming services like Fubo TV, Sling TV, or YouTube TV offer a lot of sports channels. Some games stream legally on Apple TV, Peacock, or Prime Video. You can often sign up for a free trial and cancel any time. Consumer Reports does not condone using pirated free streams, but says if you're going to do it anyway, use a mobile device instead of your computer to reduce the malware risk. And if you use a computer, be sure it's updated. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a quick look at the road with Transguide. There's Loop 410 and McCullough. Things look pretty good over there. And Loop 410 at Pear and Bidal, a very quiet Friday morning after all of the festivities last night. We had Spurs game. We had yeah. a very crowded uh, downtown with uh, the Longhorns at the Alamo. Bowl, even though they lost. Sorry, yeah. Sorry about the Longhorns. <laughs> I bet okay. San Antonio police and Bear County deputies went home last night and they're like, whew, yes. Yes. They went, you know, traffic and Rest security up for and tomorrow evening. So. Yeah, all that stuff. Before we jump into the forecast, fashion accessory alert. So Mike got a cool gift for <laughs> uh, Christmas from his son because you've been in the Nutcracker several years in a row. You've got Nutcracker and, and, and cufflinks. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of Nutcrackers. Anyway, got a lot yeah. of decorating. Oh, they're for very cool. So got these, these Nutcrackers. Little, little so nutcracker. Cufflinks there. And, and did nice. you notice Steph's uh, New Year's Eve uh, yes. disco uh, ball, ball drop earrings? Yep. 
Yeah. We're Ready for the new year. Yes. We had a guest on there. I can't think of her name that uh, does earrings like that on SA Live a couple yeah. of weeks Very back. Festive. Yeah. Very festive. Very festive. Steph's time of ready year. to party at 4.49 in the morning. <laughs> and it's going to be, uh, if you are heading out now, of course, you know, just be careful this weekend. But if you are heading out this weekend, uh, it's going to be fantastic mm -hmm. weather for it. It's it really going to be is. nice and warm. We're not going to have anything to, uh, to deal with as far as that goes. This was from a couple of days ago from Mr. McClellan over there at Woodlawn Lake. And look at how gorgeous that is. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yes, yeah, truly breathtaking. Thank you very much for that picture. And uh, you really can't see the clouds out there too awfully much. One thing you can see is the fact that the road is dry over there, 10 to 410. If you do indeed have to head into uh, work this morning, or maybe you're heading out for a long weekend, 52 here in town, 45 Bernie stage, 42s at both Kerrville as well as Comfort. So obviously a little bit chillier out there in the Hill Country, but we are still Roughly 10 degrees above normal right now, 10, 11 degrees above normal. Humidity, yeah, it's, it's not as though you really notice it when you step outside. As a matter of fact, dew point temperatures, the measure moisture in the atmosphere, have dropped down anywhere from, say, 10, 15, close to 20 degrees compared to this time yesterday. So, yes, we did dry out. We still have a little bit of fog off to the east and then those couple of sprinkles off to the west this morning. And that's what taking into account that 10%. I think we dropped down to uh, 48 degrees before it's all said and done. And then we are going to make it up into the uh, low to mid 60s by late this morning. There's that 20% chance for some shade showers primarily out to the west will top off today at 70 peak or two of sunshine, but those a uh, few showers out there and that's what uh, this computer model is indicating the rapid update model. Lots of clouds around here. A couple of showers off to the west uh, just scattered about here and there. Maybe one or two of them in town this afternoon. Not that much more in portions of the hill country and it's not going to be any big rain out anything like that. That's going to be the situation in through uh, roughly dinner time, early evening, then we're going to start to clear on out. And once we clear out tonight, that's what's in store for the uh, the rest of the weekend. The really, really cold air and we got 29 as far south as Wichita and then jump up at 53 Dallas 52 here in town. That really cold air is going to be staying up there to the north of us. We will get little little fronts moving on through here. Nothing like what we had the uh, right before Christmas by any stretch. This wave in the upper level steering winds, that's the disturbance kind of sliding on through here, giving us those couple little showers that slides on through. We get into a very tranquil pattern going into tomorrow as well as Sunday. Another low starts to dig out there to the west of us, and that's going to scooch on through here. Bring a front through late says Sunday night into early Monday. That's going to give us a chance for a shower couple of thunderstorms are going to be possible around there and then that will move on through. It's not going to do that much as far as knocking temperatures down. It will knock down a little bit, but there's going to be another more substantial front in this northwesterly uh, kind of airflow, which is going to come on in here and that's going to be for Thursday. So we'll stay very warm to start off the new year up through midweek and then we'll finally make it back down to basically normal temperatures by the latter portion of the week. 67 degrees today at noon couple of showers out there, primarily out to the west, and then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 70. So we'll be anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above normal. A couple of those showers, again, mainly off to the west. And then as we go into last day of the year and the first day of the new year, it's going to be warm. We'll have some cool mornings, not overly cold, and high temperatures, mid to upper 70s. Going to be very warm on New Year's Day. Monday, a couple of showers, a thunderstorm or two. Of course, most folks celebrate New Year, or at least the holiday, you know, company wide on Monday. And then back to school Tuesday, not bad, mid 70s, another front late in the week. That'll at least, like I said, knock us down to just about normal readings. We should be back to normal schedule wise by Tuesday or Wednesday mm -hmm. for just about everybody. Yep. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, at least at least the weather will be mild over the weekend. Yes, nothing in Clement as far as any, you know, traveling to get togethers, things like that. Okay, thank you, Mike. 454, 54 degrees. Up next, a first look at 2023's Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve celebration. Plus, there's a lot more to stream this weekend, including the top movie of 2022. Welcome back. Times Square gets ready to ring in the new year, plus Top Gun Maverick is now flying high on streaming. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. This New Year's Eve might feel a little more normal compared to the past couple of pandemic years, at least on TV. Ryan Seacrest and co-host Liza Koshy tell us when you watch them on ABC this year, 
Times Square should once again be packed with people. We're hoping there will be a normal or larger than normal crowd because mm -hmm. we haven't had that capability and ability in the last couple of years. Now, there is potentially a little rain, but I think we'll see those pins full and the streets packed. Just on our way to this interview today, it was packed, so I imagine Times Square New Year's night is going to be packed, and I'm excited about that. A lot more crowd interactions. They're co-hosting Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest Saturday night on ABC. It'll be a quiet weekend at the box office. Avatar The Way of Water should easily earn the most cash. No new movies opening wide. In limited release, Tom Hanks gets grumpy in A Man Called Otto. And on Netflix, marriage story writer-director Noah Baumbach is back with the dark comedy White Noise, starring Adam Driver and Baumbach's real-life romantic partner, Greta Gerwig. Yet here you are, Captain... Top Gun Maverick continues to soar to new heights. 2022's box office champ has now become Paramount Plus's most watched film debut. Previous champ, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And Space Jam 2 producer and actor LeBron James is 38 today. Rumor is he's also a pretty good basketball player. While Abbott Elementary Emmy winner Cheryl Lee Ralph is 66. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now, 4.58 and 54 degrees for now. Okay, folks, Southwest Airlines said it expects to return to normal operations today. That's after more than 2,000 of its flights were canceled this week. How passengers can get refunds and other reimbursements. Plus, a driver accused of street racing here in San Antonio is now facing multiple charges, including injury to a child. Why police still need help in this investigation. Outside with Transguide right now, that's that shot there at 10 at the Y. Steven is in the studio as we get your Friday morning commute going. We'll be right back and talk with Steven. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. Southwest Airlines planning to reboot its full flight operation starting today after days of cancellations and customer inconveniences. Coming up, what the U.S. Transportation Department is telling travelers and Southwest Airlines this morning. Plus, what's next for San Antonio Councilman Clayton Perry after new documents reveal how much he is accused of drinking during a crash. Outside with live cam as we get ready to wrap up the year. Uh, we're looking at 54 degrees out there, so a little cooler this morning than yesterday. But the warming trend does continue. Hey, we've made it to Friday. It is December 30th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a wonderful week. Uh, I know the weather has been working out, especially for all our visitors last night. No doubt about that. It's been what we call Chamber of Commerce weather around here. We have had more clouds maybe than a lot of folks would prefer, but at least it hasn't been the uh, the big chill as of late, Mike Osterhage. You know, and again, thinking about it, last week this time, 16 degrees here in town, and we are way above that. Actually, uh, still on the above normal side. As of right now, temperature stands at 54 degrees. Normal low is in the low 40s, so we're anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above where we should be and that bottom number the dew point has dropped down from yesterday because it was fairly humid stepping outside yesterday we are going to make it up to a high today well up to 70 and as far as the allergens or excuse me the aquifer is concerned on yesterday's reading no change and the allergens we do have some mountain cedars showing up we've got a couple of fronts moving on through here especially late Sunday and then Thursday not anything overly strong so we'll see what the mountain cedar does with that mold is on the uh, the low side we've got a couple of showers that are showing up on radar as well out in portions of the hill country right now not really too big of a deal. We've got this little disturbance which is trying to slide on through here and right there just over the river in northern Mexico and that's sliding in toward Valverde County right around Rock Springs. A couple of those showers over toward Junction and there'll still continue to be a couple of them out there, especially later on today. And then even here in town, you can't rule out a shower or two later on this afternoon, but the majority of the rain is going to be out there to the in the western parts or excuse me into the western half of our viewing area in the hill country. Like I said, mountains Cedar is on the, the moderate side this morning and temperatures. We are going to make it up to 70 later on today, 67 at noon. A couple of those showers scattered about here and there. Then once we get into tonight, we are going to start to clear on out and that's setting the stage for a really good looking weekend. It definitely is going to be on the warm side with temperatures that will be averaging anywhere from again 15, almost 20 degrees above normal, but 
going to have a lot of sunshine. So if you are planning to be outside this weekend, heading off to a New Year's celebrations, no problems as far as the weather is concerned. Any problems on the roads? Traffic Authority, good morning, Stephen. Happy last Friday. 2022. Hey, good to see you, Mike. Uh, well, you know what? The roads have been pretty quiet for the last few days, and we're still seeing that same trend continue. Check out 410 at McCullough. You really don't see a whole lot out there this early in the morning. Uh, but of course, we know it's still a holiday for a lot of folks, so the roads will remain this quiet for likely the next hour or so. But we will keep a close eye on things, and as always, remember to drive safe. Issues could still pop up. But let's get you to the map, and this is what we really have been seeing just all that green out there, and it's a copy and paste type of traffic update. So every morning, We've been showing you the same map again. Issues do pop up when we have people out there at uh, times, but uh, we haven't really spotted anything that's going to hinder the commute at this point. Right now, drive time 37 northbound 28 minutes. If you're traveling in from Pleasanton Highway 90 and those eastbound lanes, usual drive time looks to be about 30 minutes. And right now that arrival from Lionel to the downtown area should be about 17 minutes on I-35 northbound. But let's get you back here at 10 at the Y. You can see just quiet roads again is how we're starting our Friday morning, the last Friday of the new year. But as I mentioned, remember there are those construction spots to be on the lookout for well into the new year. We'll have an update on that coming up in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you. 14 drinks in four hours. Police documents released reveal how much San Antonio Councilman Clayton Perry is accused of drinking on the night of a suspected DWI incident. If convicted, Perry faces up to six months in jail and a fine of three thousand dollars. Perry was booked this week on DWI for causing a crash. He's accused of being involved in back on November 6th. We're told someone followed Perry after the crash. SAPD eventually caught up with him and an officer's body cam shows him slurring his words. A driver accused of street racing now faces multiple charges. 33 year old John Felon facing those charges. It includes injury to a child causing serious bodily injury and two counts of racing on the highway with serious bodily injury. Deputies say Felon lost control of his Pontiac GTO while racing another car along Highway 90 near Highway 211. Investigators say he hit a third car. A mother and her 10 year old child inside that car were taken to University Hospital. Deputies are still trying to identify a woman inside Felon's car who was also hurt. They are also looking for the driver accused of racing him. If you have any information about that driver of a white Volkswagen GTI with a black stripe, or if you saw the race, you are asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Southwest Airlines is planning to resume normal flight operations today after days of system-wide cancellations and delays following that major winter storm. This morning at San Antonio International Airport, only five flights are canceled for Southwest compared to dozens over the past few days. ABC's Justin Finch has a closer look at Southwest's next steps. Starting today, Southwest Airlines aims to end the travel nightmare impacting customers nationwide. My personal apology is the first step of making things right. The air carrier releasing a statement saying, we are encouraged by the progress we've made to realign crew, their schedules, and our fleet. Southwest has canceled more than 15,000 flights since last week, likely impacting more than a million travelers in what's being called one of the worst airline meltdowns in U.S. history. I've never seen anything like this. This is absolutely crazy. Many stranded Southwest customers have spent days without their luggage, forced to cover unforeseen expenses out of pocket. Southwest is urging impacted travelers to submit receipts on its website, saying it will honor reasonable requests for reimbursement for meals, hotel, and alternate transportation from those whose flights were canceled or significantly delayed between December 24th and January 2nd. The airline also pledging to reimburse customers unused tickets during that same window. The U.S. Department of Transportation already investigating Southwest, also vowing to hold the carrier accountable for those reimbursements. I'm assigning U.S. DOT resources to follow through on every complaint that comes in to make sure that you get compensated. But travelers should be prepared to wait. Southwest says that compensation process could take weeks, as could the timeline for them to ship lost luggage back to passengers. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 509, 54 degrees. Still ahead, how YouTube TV subscribers can now get a bill credit now up to $450. San Antonio city leaders in the midst of preparations for next year, how they're hoping to get some attention from the Texas legislature. 
And taking a look out there with live cam, nice and cool for now, 54 degrees. It didn't feel like there's too much humidity out there, so we'll take it. And later today, nice 70s. We'll be right back. Five twelve, a new year will bring a new biennial session of the Texas legislature. Cities around the state are keeping an eye on the nearly 1,500 bills filed so far. Gary Berenger talked with the city of San Antonio's director of government affairs about some of the top ones they're keeping their eye on. Approved in early November, San Antonio's legislative agenda covers the broad strokes of what the city will support or oppose in everything from economic development to health care. One of the city's core goals, though, is maintaining as much authority as it can which is why opposing a bill aimed at preempting cities from regulating commercial activity tops its list. City staff say that could have some wide-ranging effects. Construction, you know, in San Antonio, the development, uh, the areas that uh, are under permitting, for example, um, giving permits uh, to construction companies, you know, doing development projects across the city. And while that may be chief on city officials' minds, the issue of property taxes may hit closer to home for many. The San Antonio Thank City you. Council raised Go several ahead. property tax exemptions for homeowners last year through existing options in state law. Now various property tax bills have been filed in the Capitol, including one by San Antonio State Representative Diego Bernal, dealing with how homes are appraised. That homes are compared as they are from homestead to homestead versus homestead to like, for example, an Airbnb that's being used as a business. Another issue the city is following isn't necessarily a legislative one. It's the challenge period to FCC broadband maps, which will be used to determine how billions in funding are spread around. It is our due diligence right now to identify those areas that are not in existing uh, currently in the maps uh, because then that would result in the state getting less money and then less money coming to particular areas across the city. These just part of what looks like will be a busy session. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. 514, 54 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to tell you about a new app. We'll warn you about potential spam calls. And take a look at Transguide 410 right there. Here is 1604 at Petranco. We're going to talk to Stephen Cavazos and see if there are any problems out there. Mike has your New Year's weekend forecast. This is Liz. She just stepped up to care for her mom, and she has questions. Luckily, Liz has CareWell. It's a one-stop shop for everything your loved one needs. Founded by actual caregivers and staffed by real caregiving specialists, they'll show you all the best brands and products, and they're trained to take your questions, even the embarrassing ones. With CareWell, you got this. Visit CareWell.com for 30% off your first auto ship order. Proudly supporting the Alzheimer's Association. When you really need to sleep, you reach for the really good stuff. Sequel Ultra helps you sleep better and longer when you need it most. It's non-habit forming and powered by the makers of NyQuil. Sequel Ultra, when you really, really need to sleep. <laughs> when you can barely smell your plug-in, what are your guests smelling? Try Febreze Fade to 5 Plug. It has built-in technology to digitally control how much scent is released to smell first day fresh for 50 days. La, 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 la. Well, it's the last uh, show before New Year's mm -hmm. with all of us, yeah. and we finally family got the back family together. back together. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Everybody Hi. have a good Christmas and yeah. Yeah. It's everything? Good. Quick. Good, Wonderful. Good, good to see you back. And, Thank you. Uh, loving, uh, we, we mentioned it earlier. Your oh, my little, my yeah. little uh, nutcracker, nutcracker cufflinks, cufflinks for my, my son. And yeah. now we're getting a close up. And then let me put it up next to the uh, the pocket square because my other son got me this beautiful little I love that part. Right nice. Yeah, your sons have great taste. There's the nutcracker and there's the end. The, <laughs> love very, it. Very the nice. Little, the little pocket square. So, All right, so we need a New Year's forecast from you yes, coming up. That will First, be coming up. we're going to check yeah. in with yeah. uh, Mr. Cavazos. Yeah, last Friday commute of the year, guys. Let's get a quick look around town. Uh, you know what? Uh, the week has really felt like a vacation for me, to be honest with you, because the issues have been almost non-existent. But of course, we did have our fair share of problems yesterday, uh, but they weren't really uh, too major where we were seeing a lot of slowdowns or congestion. In fact, even the morning rush hour, uh, it's pretty much we can probably rephrase that as the morning slow hour because there really has just been slow traffic, uh, light traffic really at 10 at Vance Jackson as well. But we get you to the map. And again, this is what we have been seeing the last few mornings, just a lot of quiet roadways. But 
but still be on the lookout. Road closures are expected well into the new year. This is something that I reminded uh, our drivers of yesterday, and I'm going to tell you all know again, Loop 1604 on the northeast side of San Antonio. Striping and barrier work will continue up until January, actually January 7th. This starts on January 3rd, pardon me. And again, we'll wrap on Saturday, January 7th. It is overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Alternating lane closures on Loop 1604 eastbound <coughs> from Nacogdoches Road to I-35. But of course, if you want to plan your commute ahead of time, just head over to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures that are current. But back here on TransGuide, it has just been a pretty nice and quiet morning. The end. You know what? Guess what? The roads are also dry back here, so that's not going to. We're not going to see any problems with that, at least, Mike. A couple of sprinkles, though, as we go on into the late morning hours, especially out to the west. First of all. Their grand puppy just played himself to sleep. <laughs> I love that picture. And I wonder how many kids look like that after playing over the past couple of days. So that's a great little pic. Wouldn't it be nice just to be able to just fall asleep anywhere like that? Anyway, uh, we do have some clouds out there right now. But as Stephen was pointing out, roads are dry over there 10 at 410 and 54 degrees. Very mild. Still grab a light jacket. A little cooler in portions of the hill country, 57 in Helotus. The humidity is down considerably compared to this time yesterday. It was fairly humid yesterday morning. And now we're back down into the uh, low 40s, low to mid 40s for uh, dew point temperatures. And we've got a lot of clouds around here. We will have a couple of showers. We have some right now. I'm going to show you radar in just a moment. And uh, that 20% chance for just a couple of uh, light little showers around here. And that's going to be the situation through the rest of the afternoon. 70 for a high temperature today. Some sunshine thrown in and still a couple of those little uh, sprinkly showers around here, which is what this computer model is indicating. There are a few of them out there right now, and we'll continue to see one or two of them in portions of the hill country. Not a huge rainfall event at all, but you know, a decent shower here and there, maybe around Kerrville, Lakey later on today and a couple of them in and around town. And then even going into late afternoon, a few heavier pockets, if you will. And that's going to be the situation through dinner time into the early evening hours. A couple of these showers. This particular model does have a few of those showers even here in town by early evening. Then we're going to start to clear on out and that sets the stage then for a really good looking weekend, albeit definitely on the warm side coming up this weekend. Also, the humidity, which is very low right now, is going to start to try and work its way back in here as we go through the day on New Year's Day. Then the next front's going to move on through and that's going to knock the humidity down going into the first part of next week. And as far as temperatures are concerned, it is going to be a very warm weekend. We're going to be pushing 80 degrees. As a matter of fact, a lot of folks are going to be hitting 80 on New Year's Day as well as going into Monday. Then another front moves on through here, but you can see it doesn't really do all that much. The next front, though, let me jump back to that real quickly. And the next front, though, is actually going to knock us down to normal readings once we get in toward the latter portion of the week. Low temperatures will stay very mild going into the first part of the new year. And then again, by the latter part of the week, we'll finally can be back down closer to where we should be for this time of year, which, by the way, is the coldest historically, as far as normals are concerned, coldest time of the year up through the first couple of weeks of January. 67 degrees today at noon. A few showers out there, just one or two of them, you know, maybe a decent downpour scattered about here and there. That's going to be the, the situation later on this afternoon with a high up to 70 and even a couple of those showers lingering into the early evening hours. Then we're going to start to clear out. Tomorrow looks fantastic. We'll start off in the upper 40s and then get up to 74, 78 on New Year's Day. A lot of sunshine over the weekend. Clouds move in here late Sunday into Monday as a front moves on through a couple of showers. Even a thunderstorm is going to be possible on Monday and then temperatures will knock down. But you can see it's not going to be a huge blast of cold air by any stretch, but at least by Thursday then with that next front, we will go back down to normal temperatures. Normal's good. Yeah, yeah. I like it, but yeah, very warm weekend. Okay, well, at least people can be outside celebrating. Right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, sir. 523, 54 degrees. Let's look here. Winning a lot of numbers. Pick 3, 743, Fireball 3. Daily 4, 0542, Fireball 9. Your cash 5 numbers 2816 at 2224. Texas 2 step 45620 with a bonus ball of 7.
In today's Tech Bites, another big change for Twitter. Reports say the company is now facing eviction and will close its office in downtown Seattle. Over 200 workers were cut from the office after Elon Musk took over. The staffers remaining in Seattle have been told to work from home. YouTube TV is paying up if you sent business its way. Anyone subscribing to the base plan through a referral link will get a $45 credit. You can use the same link to get discounts up to $450 over 12 months, and you can find that by tapping your profile avatar. Google Voice is sounding the alarm on spam calls. The internet service will now warn you when a potential spam call is coming in, just like the feature we see with traditional cell phone service. If a user confirms that a call is indeed spam, future calls from that number will go straight to voicemail. Finally, those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rihanna and Ali. Have a great day. 527, 54 degrees. Some travelers are still stuck in the huge Southwest Airlines mess. However, most of the flights are scheduled to be on time today. What the airline is doing now to make sure this doesn't happen again. 2023, two days away. So why not start out on a healthy note? We have six ways you can start the year right so you can achieve your goals. And the weather will be perfect to do that, by the way. And ahead on GMSA at six, the Spurs and the Longhorns weren't the only teams in action last night. How the Cowboys looked in their win against the Titans in Thursday Night Football. We've been gone since uh, the 17th of December from Jacksonville, Florida. After days of chaotic travel messes, uh, things are finally returning to normal for Southwest Airlines today. We hear from some travelers who are still trying to get home. And after a super cold morning last week, we're starting at 54 degrees. It's a walk in the park compared to last week. Well, that's true. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is December 30th. We'll talk to Steve in a second. We welcome Mike Oster H back to the anchor desk welcome. after being out for the holidays. Speaking of Southwest, we flew in uh, Wednesday evening okay. and there was still over there at the airport that huge section. It was probably what, 30 by 30 square and just bags all lined oh, up there. So. Not surprised. And I've heard stories yeah. about pilots from the flight deck saying, hey, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we're glad you're with us. We're so sorry. Did, did your flight crew say anything on your flights? No, they no. didn't. But as we were checking in, um, the gate agent said, hey, it looks like everything's going to be great. And this was in, in Denver. And so, yeah, this will be the first on time flight of the day. Oh, wow. Because kept looking oh, you know, wow. for 24 to 36 hours beforehand because yeah. our, our in-laws, my in-laws, has got uh, their flight just up and canceled yeah. mm -hmm. under you know out from under them but ours was still there so so you know, did people applaud so. or did they just sheepishly board the plane <laughs> hoping that nothing changed oh the whole time and just going okay hope the bags okay. make it hope the bags. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. Big so, yeah. anyway yeah everything uh, worked out fine and we've got some uh, nice weather in store for the weekend so if you are doing any traveling any driving around this weekend heading off to friends house or something for any celebrations yeah it's going to be real real beautiful out there we've got some cloudy skies as of right now and temperature stands at 54 degrees normal low is 41 so 10 15 degrees above normal dew point has dropped off significantly compared to this time yesterday so it's a little more comfortable when you step outside wind out of the northwest at nine miles per hour got a couple of showers out here parts of the hill country right around junction down toward rock springs and then a slightly bigger batch of rain just across the river into northern mexico and this is where the majority of the rain is going to be uh, throughout the rest of today a couple of the showers going to be hanging around here some will continue to kind of edge their way eastward the majority of the rain though will be to the west of uh, 281 or excuse me west of 35 and that's going to be the case throughout the rest like i said the rest of today mountain cedar is on the moderate side mold is low we do have a couple of showers out to the west this morning and then a few of them later on this afternoon uh just a you know one or two even here in town you can't rule out a shower it's definitely going to be on the warm side we will make it up to 70 not quite as warm as yesterday thanks to the extra cloud cover around here but then this weekend sunny and very warm mid to upper 70s especially on new year's day a lot of folks are going to be hitting 80 on new year's day and then starting off uh, going into the first week of 2023 few showers even a storm on monday very warm start all the way through the middle part of the week then we have yet another front front's going to squeeze out a couple of showers monday then slightly more potent front comes in here by the end of the week. Nothing like what we had right before Christmas, but at least it's going to put temperatures back down closer to normal readings. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike, and good morning to my dad who's watching out in Bernie right now. So uh, dad, let's get you updated on the commute because a lot of folks
folks are visiting from out of town and you can see 37 at Fair Avenue. If you have to travel through there, really wouldn't encounter any major issues at this point. 410 and McCullough, even a quiet shot, but we can expect that traffic to pick up there probably within the next two hours or so. But right now it's a perfect time to take advantage of these empty roadways. Grab a breakfast taco or go grab a cup of coffee. Okay, so this is the same thing we've been showing you all throughout the week. A lot of green on the screen, but we will be keeping a close eye on these roadways. As I mentioned, they're still active road closures and I'll continue to update you guys on that uh, as the morning does progress. But right now it does look like you are in the clear if you plan to hit the roads in the next few minutes or so. And if your travels are going to take you right here into the Alamo City, let's check out those travel times because right now that journey from Bernie 24 minutes down on I-10 eastbound in the downtown area, 26 minutes on 281 southbound if you're heading in from Bulverde and not too awful from New Braunfels. I-35 southbound looks like you're in the clear as well. Well, let's get you back here on Transguide 10 at Callahan. Uh, again, the morning commute has been off to a quiet start, but maybe in the next hour or so we'll see a few more vehicles out there, but I wouldn't expect any major congestion given that it is still a holiday for most. Guys? Stephen, thank you. New this morning, a woman is dead after a shooting on the city's west side. San Antonio police say another person was also hurt. Our Camelia Juarez has the latest and Camelia, what do you know so far? Stephanie, Mark, San Antonio police say they found the woman dead at a Baptist neighborhood hospital near Westover Hills off of 151 around 1 this morning. But San Antonio police say that's not where she where the shooting happened. San Antonio police say the shooting happened somewhere between Blue Ridge Drive and Riva Street on the city's west side. The man and woman were inside a car when another car pulled up next to them and began shooting on the road. After the shooting, the pair went to the Baptist Neighborhood Hospital where the woman died from her injuries. The man was taken to Bamsey, but he is expected to be okay. Police are continuing to investigate this fatal shooting, and the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is working to identify that woman. Reporting live from downtown, Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. 536 Uvalde's only pediatrician is pulling double duty. One is a doctor, the other is an advocate for changes to gun laws. On May 24th, Dr. Guerrero responded to Uvalde Memorial to help with patients taken there. Weeks later, he testified in front of Congress and has been back in our nation's capital several times since then, most recently two weeks ago. Guerrero tells us he this is his duty, fighting for change to gun laws to honor his Hippocratic oath to save children. It's a part of my job, and, and, and I think it's part of your job as a physician, too, no matter who you are and where you are, uh, to step up and protect your patients. Now, right now, House Resolution 1808, the assault of weapons ban of 2022, has passed in the House. In the Senate, the bill was read twice and then referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Hundreds of people in Bear County may be eligible to have their criminal records wiped clean. This as the San Antonio NAACP branch offers free expungement services. The group is partnering with the Texas Legal Services Center out of Austin. For eligibility, you cannot be convicted. But there are certain circumstances for misdemeanors where you could still be eligible. You must make below the federal poverty guideline. There are some ways that people can qualify if they have medical needs um, or housing needs where their income can be adjusted for eligibility. Advocates are asking people to apply now because the grant supporting this program expires on February 1st. To apply in person, you can visit the Barbara Jordan Community Center in San Antonio at 2803 East Commerce Street between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. This is Monday through Friday. For more information on eligibility requirements and how to apply online, you can just head over to our website at KSET.com. Southwest Airlines promising to resume normal operations today. The company CEO will be providing answers later today in an interview on Good Morning America. For now, as CNN's Mike Valerio reports, today's almost return to normal is a major relief for the hundreds of thousands of passengers who have been affected by the airline's meltdown. After eight days of a chaotic holiday travel mess, Southwest Airlines says flights are returning to a normal schedule Friday after a disastrous week and just in time for the busy New Year's weekend. This has been a crazy time. Of the usual 4,000 flights Southwest operates daily, only 39 flights were canceled so far for Friday, according to FlightAware.com, as the airline says it will resume normal operations. I feel... I'm confident. I checked like Southwest a bunch of times. I refreshed the app a bunch of times today, so I was like, we're good. 
Despite the much welcome relief, the damage is done. Southwest is facing growing questions about how its systems allowed things to go so wrong for so long, as the airline promises it's working to make sure it doesn't happen again. And the travel hassle isn't over quite yet for some Southwest passengers still waiting to get to their final destinations. We've been gone since uh, the 17th of December from Jacksonville, Florida. And there's still a big mess to clean up. Massive piles of baggage are still stranded around the country. As Southwest staff works to sort through all of these lost suitcases, including one belonging to Brad Mayberto's son, which took a vacation to Sacramento despite his son's flight getting canceled. Who knows when he'll get it back? Super disappointed. Meanwhile, the Transportation Department is renewing its warning to Southwest, saying the airline could face consequences for the meltdown if it fails to make things right for the thousands of stranded passengers. Hopefully they get it together. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. Well, new images show a Chinese fighter jet intercepting a U.S. reconnaissance aircraft. It happened over the South China Sea December 21st. The Chinese Navy J-11 fighter flew within 20 feet the nose of an RC-135 rivet joint. Indo-Pacific Command said the plane, which had 30 people on board, had to take evasive action to avoid a possible collision. The U.S. aircraft was in international airspace conducting routine operations. The official uh, says the U.S. deemed the incident unsafe and plans to respond through diplomatic and military channels. China claims much of the South China Sea as part of its territorial waters, but the U.S. does not recognize those claims. A House investigation found the Food and Drug Administration's approval process of a high-priced Alzheimer's drug was, quote, rife with irregular irregularities. Now, the report just released is sharply critical of Biogen, which makes the medication. The report says Biogen set a, quote, unjustifiably high price for Adilin. Now, the report said the FDA approved the drug for people with Alzheimer's disease, which is a far broader population than was studied in the clinical trials. The FDA says it's reviewing the findings and recommendations and says its own review found the interactions with Biogen were appropriate. It said it's already started implementing changes in line with the committee's recommendations. 541, 54 degrees. The beginning of a new year can be a great time to reprioritize your health. Up next, we have six things you can do to keep yourself on track for 2023. Outside with live cams with Steven's dad watching right now. Aww. We don't want to let him down. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, we're going to check in with your son coming up. You'll see all the, all the pressure's on him now, right? The <laughs> rest of the newscast hinges on what he says. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 544. Looking to hop on the New Year's gold train and make some healthier habits for 2023? CNN's Steve Nance has six ways to make sure your goals don't get derailed. The beginning of a new year can be a great time to reprioritize your health. I think at, at its essence, it's a way of being kind to ourselves. An easy way to start, adding more foods that are good for your diet. Improving the quality of the, in the nutritional value or quality of the food that we eat. Um, not denying ourselves certain things. Dr. Roxanne Sukal, an internist at the Cleveland Clinic, says that with any change you decide to make, ask yourself if you can keep it up for the next six months. If the answer to your question when you ask it is, I don't think I could do it for even a couple of days, then uh, it's not worth trying because uh, the experience of failure. Another tip, don't go to parties and celebrations hungry. Eat a scoop of peanut butter before you go or a handful of sunflower seeds or something that will just at least take the edge off in a in a substantial way. And involve your friends and family in your goals, <laughs> like creating a walking club. Involving your relationships in the things that you do uh, can be very helpful for some people. Dr. Sukal says you also need to remember to give yourself some downtime and find something that nourishes your soul. But in the end, you don't have to start all of your goals January 1st. This is a hard time of year to set goals and keep to them. Uh, it might be easier uh, in a few weeks when, when the excitement is passed. For today's Health Minute, I'm Steve Nannis. 546, still 54 degrees. Let's look out there with TransSky to see how the roads are doing. I-37 at Fair Avenue, looking pretty good at this hour. And also Loop 410 at McCullough. Things are moving, but we will be checking in with our Stephen Cabasos very soon.
All right, 549 on the nose. That's right. It's been looking pretty good out there with the trans guy camera shots. I mean, loop 410 at Parambola looks okay. And let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I I'm telling you, it just has felt like a vacation all week for me. I mean, really, there have not been major issues out there. Uh, don't want to jinx ourselves too soon because we are inching closer to 6 a.m. minute by minute. Uh, but right now, I would say at this point, 549, we don't see a lot of uh, problems. But check out US 90 at Couples. That's one of those spots where we tend to see traffic pick up in both the east and westbound lanes as folks are making their way to and from the Alamo City. Now, while the roads have been quiet, we know that it could possibly be another big travel day out on the roadways with maybe people heading home or just traveling for the upcoming new year. So let's check out some of those gas prices because if you're going to be hitting the roads and need to fuel up right now, as of today, AAA does report the average gas price in Bear County is $2.74. Around the state, we're looking at $2.79 and around the country, $3.17. So just something uh, to know if you have to fuel up. I did notice some of these prices actually went up by a few cents as opposed to what we showed you earlier in the week on Tuesday. But uh, still, just make sure that you manage uh, your time accordingly if you plan to travel. Right now, 37 at Houston shouldn't be too much of a problem. But again, we'll be keeping a close eye on things throughout the morning. All right, making your dad proud. Thank you, oh, Stephen. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and good morning again, by good the morning. way. They always say you can tell uh, how big a dog may be based on its paw size. Can we it it has paws the size of a grizzly, oh. and it's only a year old. And our... Uh, our oh, regular viewer, Yvonne, wow. look at that. That's Kodiak, black and white Pyrenees. Look at the paws in the hand right there. You're going to need a bigger, I mean, more dog food, Yvonne. <laughs> oh, yeah, those more dog food, buy more those space. huge bags, but oh, wow. some of the sweetest dogs in the world. Kodiak's a cutie. Yeah. I yeah. believe more growing is going to happen. I believe you're right, Yvonne. Mm -hmm. Look mm -hmm. at the size of that thing there. Oh. Beautiful dog. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, we've got some clouds out there. We've been talking about dry roads so far this morning. However, uh, first of all, temperatures, 40s, 50s. We are anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal right now. 49 at Port SA, 58 at Stinson. We've got a couple of little sprinkles that are showing up on radar as of right now. Not a lot, but here on the uh, southwest side of town, around 35 and 410, a couple of little sprinkles right there. All this is sort of drifting off to the northwest, and then a couple more heading down 30 right in where Atascosa, Medina, and Bear County meet up. A few of those showers move through Divine. Not really a heck of a lot. Even a couple of them move through Poteet and just um, just to the southeast of Elmendorf right there. And then head up in toward the hill country. And you've been seeing a couple of these little sprinkles in Bernie. And then heading out toward Comfort as well. So if you are going out 10 in toward the hill country, you're going to run into a few of these showers. Then we do have a few more out there to the west. So that's pretty much a good good overall uh, example of what we're going to be seeing not only this morning but this afternoon. The majority of rain out there to the west and just a few of the showers a little bit closer into town, which is what this computer model is indicating. Now, a little bit of a kind of a broad brush, but those few little showers in and around town as of right now. This one's a little more say aggressive with the rain than some other computers are uh, computer models are, but uh, we will have a few of those showers again kind of a broad brush situation here. It's not going to be raining everywhere nor constantly, but we will have a bit more rain out there to the uh, west of us, and that's going to be the situation going in through this afternoon. A few of those showers, even a couple of decent downpours in parts of the hill country, and then by Later on, this model actually clears us out a little, a little bit quicker than that other rapid update model does. So we'll have some clear skies overnight, and that's going to set us up for just a fantastic looking weekend around here. So this morning, we have that uh, chance for a few of those little light showers around here, and temperatures may fluctuate a few more degrees here and there, drop down a little bit more into the upper 40s. Then we're going to make it up to 67 at noon, 70 for a high temperature. Again, a couple of those showers, uh, especially out to the west. The really, really cold air right now obviously is up there to the north of us, and this is all going to be staying up to the north. We are actually are going to be on the warm side coming up this weekend. We'll get little chunks of this, a tiny little bit of this coming in here by the first of the week, then a better little chunk of cooler air coming on in here by the end of next week. <clears throat> Excuse me, but nothing like what we had going in toward uh, Christmas. So forecast today, 67 degrees, a couple of showers. So light little rain jacket if you are heading out today or even later on this afternoon, 70 for high temperatures. So we're going to be 
anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Then we go into the weekend. We clear out tonight, get down to 47 degrees, then flip that around 74 for a high temperature, 78 on New Year's Day. It's going to be a beautiful evening tomorrow evening if you are heading on out and then mild on Monday. Get that little, I mean, not much, but we drop down slightly into Tuesday and then a better chunk of some cooler air comes on in here on Thursday just to put us back down to normal reading. So just watch out for a couple little light little sprinkles that have now started to pop up around town. Overall looks nice. Yeah, good looking weekend on the warm side, but good looking weekend. Thank you, Mike. 554, 54 degrees. Let's look at your winning a lot of numbers. Pick three, seven, four, three, fireball three, daily four, zero, five, four, two, fireball nine. Your cash five numbers 2816 2224 Texas two step 45620 with a bonus ball of seven. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, passengers are still stranded across the country. Part of that Southwest travel debacle, the demand for compensation and answers growing. We put the tough questions to the Southwest Airlines CEO, Bob Jordan, in his first TV interview this morning. And with less than 24 hours left in 2022, how to start the new year right from your wallet to your kitchen and what to binge this New Year's Eve weekend. It's all coming up right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, a group of armed robbers still on the run after a bold robbery of an armored truck here in our area. What police say they got away with. Plus, the Spurs back in the win column despite a huge challenge from the New York Knicks. We have highlights and we'll hear from some of the players. And checking on the, some of the cars are on the roads this morning at I-37 and Houston Street. We've made it to Friday, the last Friday before the new year. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back.